Hey squad, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike and today's video is the final of three in our look into heart failure. If you missed last week's video on diastolic heart failure, please click the eye above my head to check it out. We finished the heart failure discussion by exploring left and right sided heart failure. The first major factor that must be said is that both systolic and diastolic heart failure affect the left side of the heart, mainly the left ventricle. These are the two main causes of left-sided heart failure. However, over time, left-sided heart failure, whether diastolic or systolic, will cause right-sided failure in the right ventricle. We'll go over how shortly. Remember, if you're lost on what diastolic and systolic heart failure are, please make sure you click the eye above my head right now to catch up because I will not be covering those topics in this video. The symptoms of left sided heart failure include restlessness, fatigue, confusion, altered mental status, orthopenia, or having to sleep in an upright seated position, tachycardia, exertional dyspnea, cyanosis, and most importantly, pulmonary congestion. This can include rails, wheezes, cough, tachypnea, and pink frothy sputum. When the left ventricle fails, it loses the ability to overcome the afterload of the aorta or it's overfilled in the preload phase, causing this extra blood to back up through the pulmonary vein and back into the lungs. This excess of fluid in the lungs has nowhere to diffuse to and begins to fill the alveoli sacs. The body then closes these filled sacs as a safety mechanism for the lungs, decreasing the amount of alveoli to undergo gas exchange. The fluid also causes bronchospasms and bronchoconstriction, leading to further shortness of breath. EMS must be cognizant of these symptoms and work quickly to correct them. CPAP, whether BLS or ALS, can greatly reduce the fluid load within the lungs. Guys, I cannot stress enough the use of CPAP in conscious left-sided heart failure patients with significant shortness of breath and wet lung sounds. If they are lethargic and are altered, positive pressure ventilations via the bag valve mask is your option. The second treatment you must think about is aggressive use of nitroglycerin to cause systemic vasodilation, which gives you more space in the pulmonary vasculature for the CPAP or the BVM to push the alveolar fluid into, thus helping to clear the lungs of fluid, decreasing shortness of breath, and the bronchospasms. Now let's look at right sided heart failure. Right sided heart failure is typically almost always caused by left sided heart failure, or at least caused by a disease process that was created by the left sided heart failure over time. The major symptoms you need to be aware of are fatigue, jugular venous distension or JVD, weight gain, GI distress, dependent edema in the arms and hands, the legs and feet, and finally, ascites, which is the buildup of fluid in the peritoneal cavity, otherwise known as your abdomen. Some causes of right sided heart failure include pulmonary embolism, pulmonary hypertension, core pulmonal, which is secondary to COPD, and all increases on the preload. Pulmonary valve and tricuspid valve regurgitation increase preload. In either case, preload or afterload will over time increase the size of the right ventricle, causing hypertrophy. The ventricle will then eventually become weakened and floppy, causing failure. Myocardial infarction is the last possible cause affecting the contractility of the right ventricle. Within the EMS realm, not much is done for treatment of right-sided heart failure, unless there are symptoms of left-sided heart failure. Monitor your patient and treat symptoms you find if necessary. Well, that's it for today, guys. As always, stay safe out there, and I will see you guys in the next video.